With me on the phone in Washington is Fred Flights, managing editor of the Langley Intelligence Group, Newsmax Media's new global intelligence and forecasting site. Fred spent 25 years working on national security issues with the CIA, DIA, the State Department, and the House Intelligence Committee. Fred also participated in negotiations in Libya with Colonel Gaddafi's top officials for the U.S. State Department. Fred, welcome. Good to be here. Well, what is your take on the momentous events that have taken place in Libya over the last 48 hours? Well, they really are momentous. and We're seeing a terrible dictator uh, being overthrown or on the brink of being overthrown. Uh, the fighting is still ongoing in Tripoli in some pockets, but I think uh, Qaddafi is clearly finished. What's interesting about this is how fast this happened, and I think it was sort of presaged by the fall of this, the town of Zawawi and a major oil refinery in the town last Thursday. The rebels came in and they were surprised by the token resistance that they encountered, and I think this gave them the idea that they may be able to make a quick run on Tripoli. Neither NATO nor the Qaddafi government was prepared for this quick advance on Tripoli, and I think the surprise helped them take the city. Now, what are the next steps for the Libyan rebels? How and when will they establish a new government? And just how involved should the U.S. be in this? Well, this is sort of the key. Uh, governing is hard, and uh, the, uh, the Transitional National Council has a hard road ahead of it to unite its disparate factions, to disarm them, to reestablish government services, to rebuild the economy, and to form a government. And um, they were able to unite in a, in a common goal to try to oppose Gaddafi, but getting them to unite on an agenda to uh, put the country back together is going to be more difficult. The U.S. role is going to be hard to, to figure out. It will be up to the rebel government to decide what role they want from the United States and Europe and the United Nations, and we're just going to have to see how that sorts out. Fred, what should the U.S. and its allies be concerned about in a post Qaddafi Libya? Well, this is a country with no democratic tradition. We don't really know who the rebels are. They have made some good noises for, towards uh, our European allies and, and to the United States. They, they've sent diplomats abroad. Uh, they have appealed for economic aid, military aid. But at the end of the day, we still don't really know who the rebels are. And there's a lot of temptation in Libya to continue a, a, a dictatorship. Uh, there's a lot at stake. There's enormous oil riches. We also know that a portion of the rebels are radical Islamists. We don't know how many, but we know there is a Muslim Brotherhood presence in Libya. We know that there is an Al-Qaeda presence. Uh, we've seen what happened in Egypt, where it appeared to be a democratic uprising, but in the elections, which Egypt is looking at uh, holding this fall, uh, according to an Al Jazeera poll, up to 50% of the seats in Parliament could be taken by Muslim Brotherhood candidates, uh, who probably will try to set up a, 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 a theocracy. We don't know what's going to happen in Libya if and when elections are held, but it's something the United States and the European allies have to keep a clear eye on. Finally, we have to keep an eye on score settling and victor's judgment, uh, victor's ju justice. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of angry people in Libya because of the oppression of the Qaddafi regime and the way he dealt with the with the, uh, the resistance. And there's going to be a great temptation for the uh, for the rebels and for the Libyan people to. Uh, engage in acts of vengeance. Now, how will events in Libya affect other di dictatorships in the Middle East, especially Syria? This should have a powerful effect on Syria and encourage the Syrian people to continue their resistance against the Assad regime. Now, the, the government of Bashir al-Assad is different than the government in Syria in that his security services have a much better hold on their country uh, what happened in Libya was sort of a surprise. After the Arab Spring, rebels quickly gained parts of the country and took the city of Benghazi, which Qaddafi never took back. Assad has not made that mistake and has not allowed rebels to hold any city or territory in the country. But there are massive protests, especially every Friday after, after Friday prayers in Syria. I think this is going to encourage those rebels, and it could encourage uh, rebels and, and democracy movements in other states, and it is my hope that news of this will get into Iran, where there is also a strong desire to overturn the government, 
they're facing a very fierce uh, uh, effort to keep the people down, and hopefully this will inspire a democracy movement in Iran that may take off someday. Talk to us about NATO, U.S., French, and British support of the rebels. How did this support their overthrow of Gaddafi, and how does that support look in hindsight? Well, I think the support was crucial. And the big winners out of this, other than the Libyan people, uh, are the French and the British, particularly French Prime Minister Sarkozy. Uh, they took a risk in carrying out airstrikes. The French and British were training uh, Libyan troops on the ground. They had special forces on the ground, and they really went out of their way to overthrow Gaddafi. And um, I think the United States played a significant role, but it also sort of played a backseat role. Uh, we were sort of dragged into this conflict at the last minute. Our support was was uh, informal. Uh, we had airstrikes, and we probably offered uh, some surveillance and intelligence support. We know drones were being used. I think it played a key role, and the rebels will remember this, but I'm not sure that the role of the United States, the reluctant role, is necessarily going to be a plus uh, for our relationship with some other countries here. We, we did not come out when we really needed to at the very beginning. And if we had done that, we, we may have allowed this conflict to have been resolved faster. Fred, last question real quickly. What's next for Gaddafi? Well, Gaddafi is in hiding. Uh, there were stories yesterday that he was in Algeria. Uh, no one really knows where he is. Uh, I think he, if he tried to flee the country, he probably tried to go to a, a, a nation which is not a signatory to the International Criminal Court, which would mandate that they turn him over for prosecution. Now, whether he uses oil wealth with a nation like Algeria to try to buy himself exile is sort of unknown. Uh, we're going to have to watch over the next couple of days. Uh, obviously, the rebels want to get him, and he, he, return, he refused various efforts to leave the country peacefully. So there's a hunt for him underway, and uh, we'll have to see. All right. Managing editor of the Langley Intelligence Group, Fred Flights, thanks so much for being here and for all of your insight. Thank you.